Oh, alrighty. I think I'm getting a little bit better at this. Hopefully, you can see me now. I've been testing out a new water bottle I got. Made by Platypus. Um, holds a liter and it folds up small enough to go in your pocket. It's kind of a neat idea. But side note, uh, I want to talk about fire today. Um, I think I might have gone over this before, but I have a my basic survival kit on a keychain thing, right? And um, you know that the law of three says that you need uh, air within three minutes, shelter within three hours, you get hypothermia, water within three days, right? And you get about three weeks without food before things start going sour. And with that in mind, um, on the keychain, um, I have a few basic things, one of which is the ways to make fire. Now, <clears throat> I found that these magnesium flint fire starter blocks and uh, one of these little P-52s, I know some like the P-38, I like the 52 because it's a little bit larger, is sufficient to, uh, you know, fling some sparks off the, the, off the, um, the flint. And uh, it gives you enough magnesium that you can scrape to start up, and this works when wet. Um, I also have a little bit more modern method, which is equally, I think, reliable, not so good in wind, is County Comms Peanut Lighter. Um, this is basically like a Zippo lighter. It's all waterproof and it closes up with O-rings so the Zippo fluid doesn't come out. But you open it up just like a Zippo fluid and you put the fluid in there like so, and you flip a little wheel and voila, you got it. And you can even set it down on a table and use it as a candle if you need to. But uh, I find that's useful. And there's a lot of other ways as well. You know, the standard Bic works well. It's always good to have, well, that one doesn't. I think I got one here with some more juice in it. Here you go. Um, you know, works pretty well. But when they get wet, the wheels tend to, to misfunction. So it's always good to have either flint or like one of these, they call a thirsium rod. Um, this one's put up by Culligan's. The Light My Fire and um, the Gob Spark brands I think are a little bit better, but basically same idea. You can flick out a whole bunch of sparks. I know some of the purists out there would say that I should be holding it still while moving the um, moving the, the holding the steel still and then drawing back on the spark because it's less likely to fling your tinder out of the way when you're using it. But I don't know. I've kind of got a couple custom to that because it allows me to fling sparks at quite a distance at my alcohol stove or where else I want to combust. But fire is important because it can take the place of shelter in some cases. And fire can be used to boil water, any water boiled for, you know, a couple of minutes. Um, I think in some cases to kill some of the spore forms of bacteria, it's eight or ten minutes. But most things are killed within a minute or two of boiling water. So you've got water and shelter are basically substituted if you have fire. It's not a substitute for some of the basics like your survival blankets, you know, your little space blankets, or also, which also comes in fairly handy, are these little tiny cheesy uh, ponchos. Um, it's amazing what you can do with one of these little cheap little ponchos. You can put them up as a shelter. If you put little rocks in there and you have a little bit of cordage, um, you're pretty much good to go. Also on my um, keychain, I carry what's a, basically a wire survival saw. It has two rings and a wire in it, and I wrap it up with the parachute cord so that it basically doesn't snag on things. But this could become a bow saw as well. Um, and of course a knife. Could have some kind of cutting tool. Um, I also carry a multi tool on my hip. But fire is an important subject. Um, you know, we've been fascinated for a while because it makes our lives a lot easier. And with the use of fire, we can make a lot of tools, we can purify water, we can heat our homes, we can cook our food, we can get rid of disease. It holds a whole bunch of different uses. Um, in the Bible, there are only really three cleansing, cleansing agents mentioned, and that's water, blood, and fire. Um, and the last one, you know, was fire. Um, John said that uh, the one that come after him would not only baptize with water, but with fire, right? So, you know, that we would get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, right? Um, in Hebrews um, 1, verses 7, and let's go for King James. 
He says, and of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers flames of fire. Flame of fire. And in Psalm, um, it says basically the same thing. He's quoting out of Psalm 104.4. Um, it's an important thing. Um, not only is the fire important in your survival um, uh, repertoire, but it's important in your ability to preach and communicate the gospel. Because if you can correctly convey the truth, if the Holy Spirit's behind what you're saying, then it will inspire others, just like fire has a way of catching and spreading. The fire of the gospel will come forth from your preaching. And when you speak to others and you witness to them and you tell them about the things that God has done in your life and how the, the change the Holy Spirit has brought over you, it causes this, this power to go forth, not only from you, but to catch into others. Right? Um, you know, he says, uh, when he sent his, his disciples out not to worry about what they'll eat or what they'll wear, he says, don't even take an extra um, cloak or staff, right? Because all the other things, the shelter and the food and all those things are provided just by being sent out with fire, right? So fire is an important thing, not only in the survival world, which is, it's key. Um, I can't stress this enough, especially if you're going to the mission field, you're going in places where you don't know where you're going or whatnot. It's worthwhile to have fire making apparatus with you, but it's also important that there be a fire in our lives, that we communicate what it is that um, God has sent us to do. Um, when he sends us forth and we have that fire, that we communicate it correctly. Now the important thing to remember is that the fire needs to come from God, not from man or other, other agencies. The first two priests to get fired from the job were two guys called Abinadab and Abayu. They were the sons of Aaron. And after the Holy Spirit fell on the temple and the fire came out and consumed the sacrifice, they saw the reaction of the crowd and they decided they were going to try the same thing and lit incense with their own fire when they tried to approach to the altar of God and were burnt up. Because all the fire needed to come from that altar of God. In Leviticus it talks about how the fire on the altar must never go out. And all the candles and the sacrifices are all lit off the fire from the altar. So the, the sacrifice that we do, the fire that we, we get, should come from our submission and our sacrificing ourselves fully unto God. Now, <clears throat> when I teach some of these survival skills, I think it's important to also understand that regardless of anything else that you have, right, that God will always make a way. We know that... Um, <clears throat> Even without our ability to trap or catch fish or, or do all the things that we do to hunt or, you know, you see, you see I got MREs here, the new clear plastic ones. Um, anyway, all these things are beside the point. If God wants to feed you, he will. He feed the, fed the prophet by having ravens bring him dinner every day. He made, you know, jars of oil and, and wheat and things go on forever without, without ending. He has always provided for his own when they're sent out in his work. So we don't need to have do these things out of a place of fear. But, but many of these skills, these basic skills, allow us to be in a position so that we are giving out of an abundance. Um, when we are no longer cold, miserable, and hungry, and whatnot, we have the ability to be able to give more. Right? Last time I talked about how the fast that God has chosen in Isaiah 58 is that we deal out our bread to the hungry. So when we're fasting, we're not fasting just because we can't provide for ourselves. We're fasting because even though we have provided for ourselves, we're giving it up so that we can give to others, right? So when I'm teaching some of these things about how not to get, you know, die of starvation and how not to, you know, freeze to death in some miserable hellhole in some corner of the world that you ended up finding yourself in, um, keep in mind that the reason why you do this is that you can continue to work towards spreading the gospel. Anyway, um, <coughs> I don't know how much film I have. I don't know how long these cameras go. It keeps on cutting me off, so I'm going to cut this short. But anyway, um, today's big subject is fire. And, you know, I can't suggest enough the need to have multiple sources. I've got these little waterproof, windproof matches. You know, there's a hundred different ways for me to light fire that are almost always on my person. And by the way, I don't smoke. Um, so there's, it seems odd that somebody who's not a smoker to carry a lighter. But when you do, keep in mind that if you get something that relies on fluid, 
um, is usually better than the stuff that relies upon pressurized gas. And you want to make sure that it seals well if you get a lighter. Um, the, the, the problem usually occurs when you rely solely on these is they either get wet and the flint won't strike or they're in your pocket and the little lever keeps getting pushed and it leaks fluid. So it's almost always, it's important to have something else as well that, that is not subject to being wet or dampened. Um, and just as with us, it's important that the Holy Spirit's never quenched and that the fire that's inside of us never goes out. Anyway, God bless and uh, I'm going to make an attempt to play with this video a little bit in my new video editor that I'm working on and hopefully my videos will get better. Anyway, uh, God bless and remember if you go to the mission field, don't be careful and be bold, God's got your back.